Billy Joe, just hang on for one minute. Uh, we're going to take the offering while you're playing the next. Uh, Gregory, would you come uh, get your pen and come on up here? And when he's playing this next song, you gather the offering. Give as God's blessed you, folks. Amen. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. And uh, so we're going to give back first before anything else. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that, that we can give. And it'll be given back to us, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Help us now, dear Lord, to be a giving people. Uh, it's of God. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, who so believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. So bless our offering now, meet our needs. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, Billy Joe, carry on. Amen. He's the master of the sea, and I want you to be the master over me, if yes. I just let him. One night up on the sea, a ship was tossing to and fro. Breakers dashed on every hand, angry winds around it blow. All aboard were filled with fright. As the mighty billows roll, then they called upon the one who the winds and waves control. 
excuse me, when he reaches out his hand, it will cease at his command. When it ways obey his will, when he said the lamb be still, what man is this they all did say that the wind and sea obey? He's the one who sailed with me. He's the master of the sea. Though the storm the life may rage and the billows round you roll, he can calm life's troubled seas as he did in days of old. As up on life's sea you sail, trust in him who never fell. I'm so glad he sailed with me. He's a master of the sea. When he reaches out his hand, billows cease at his command. Winds and waves obey his will. When he says to them, be still. What man is this they all did say that the wind and sea obey? He's the one who sails with me. He's the master of the sea. He's the one who sails with me. He's the master of the sea. Amen. Amen. You out of gas, or you got another song in you? I got one in here somewhere. Uh, He's looking for it. <laughs> That's my, I call this my mother's song. This mama, this is my mother's song. I hear her singing this from the other side. Right. In my mind, I hear her singing yeah. this song. Right. Yeah. On a, on a day in sorrow, in tears for my loved one. I'm a child bound for heaven that <laughs> Jesus came in. Though my body is weary, my soul has this feeling. My sins are forgiven, I can feel him within. Praise God, I feel like singing. I'm on the other side of life now. Praise God, I feel like singing. I'm on the other side of life now. Though my eyes grow dim, I can see heaven clearly. Though my voice grows feeble, I sing just the same In my heart there's a song I can see the gate open And I'll sing forever My joyous refrain Praise God I feel like singing I'm on the other side of life now Billy Joe, give Billy Joe a good hand. Praise the Lord. Well, amen. We're in Matthew 22 today, the end of the chapter. God has this same story uh, all through the Bible, kind of repetitious. God is very repetitious in uh, his speaking to us. Repetition is, is very, very important. God didn't forget what he said. He said it again because it's important. 
And if he said it three or four or five or, or like this particular truth we'll have today, he said it so many times, uh, I haven't even counted them, but it's been, it's been a ton of times. It's been a ton. So uh, we're going to just read a couple of verses together, church, today. Uh, let's just pick it up. Uh, let's stand. We're going to read a... pick this thing up here it is oh uh, let's pick it up verse 34 let's stay in church let's read it uh, Matthew 22 verse 34 what page is it on in our pew Bibles I wish you'd follow the Bible I you know there's uh, sometimes people uh, come to church and they uh, Matthew 22 verse 34. 1048 in the Pew Bible. I wish you'd follow along. It'd be a blessing to you. Uh, I like to see people following the Bible so you don't think I'm, I'm reading you astray, leading you astray. Uh, so uh, uh, it'd help you. Sometimes people don't follow along. I, I begin to wonder about them. I wonder why not. So anyway, verse 34. I'll read 34, and you read 35 with me, and you just keep reading on every other verse till I quit. Verse 34, but when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked of him the question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus saith unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself of these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets now let us pray lord we thank you that on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets make it real to our hearts this morning in jesus name amen you may be seated amen while i texted this out this morning and the thing that we have to recognize is that God is love. God doesn't just know about love. He is love. Every, every uh, night before I go to bed, whether it's 10 o'clock or uh, 11 or 12 or whatever time uh, it is, uh, I read the book of 1 John which is five chapters, takes about 15 minutes to read. Amen. It'll keep you close to God and keep your heart sweet. If, if, if you, if you, I, mean, I read it every day before I go to bed because if you read First John and pay attention to it, you'll stay right with God. I'm just telling you that. And I also read First Corinthians chapter 11. Does anybody know what First Corinthians 11 is? What, what is that in the Bible? Oh, that's the love chapter. Yeah, that's the love chapter. I read that every night too. You see, without love, we have nothing. Right. And so here, this great truth, and, 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 and remember this, any, anything that I do as pastor of this church or anything you do as a Christian and a part of this church, and let me tell you something, the church is very important. We're in a day and age of, of, of people don't gather at church anymore. That's a sad thing. I don't care where you meet. You can have church in a house or in a rented building. My, my son-in-law is a pastor, and they rent a school. And, and he's, uh, he started the church brand new. It's seven years old, and he has several hundred people in his church. That's a good thing. And, but they meet. And church is important because we need each other. You need a pastor. I need a congregation. We need to be brothers and sisters in Christ so we can have the blessing. I just I just bought some new anointing oil. I had a real old bottle, Brother Billy Joe, and it was, uh, I mean, see, this stuff is loose, man. That old bottle I had, I had it for years. It was so sticky, it wasn't hardly coming out of the bottle. <laughs> hey, you remember anybody that I tried to anoint with that old sticky bottle I had? Did you see? 
<laughs> and it was sticky. Yeah, did you get it? I had it on Joanne's head. <laughs> but you know, this is loose as a goose here. This is loose. So, uh, you see, you can see it moving. <laughs> that was condensed out. What happens is the water goes out of it, you know. But I've got, now this is, this is not magic about this. Some of these healers, they send you holy claws and holy oil. That's a bunch of baloney. Don't, don't you? I saw one on television the other day, and he had the people come forward, and I was surprised at him because I'd heard him preach a pretty good sermon before on prayer, but this wasn't good. He's preaching on tongues and the Holy Ghost he's supposed to be preaching on. And, and he told the people uh, uh, if they couldn't get up close to the altar to uh, lay their hands on the people in front of them, they're going to get the blessing from that. That's a bunch of baloney. Uh, because he's, taking, he's the power then, see? Yeah, he's got to lay his hand on someone's head. Then if you're touching him, touching him, touching him, you're getting the, from the, he ain't nothing, and I'm nothing. But God is everything. And God, he would got to get the glory. But I can't anoint you with oil if you ain't in church. We've got a, we've got a great decline of attendance in church, Billy Joe. People think nothing of it. People regularly contact me and, and say, well, I just, I just think I'm going to stay home and watch you on Facebook today. I, I, I like Facebook. I reach a lot of people on Facebook. But, Billy Joe, I kind of feel bad it keeps people out of church. Brother Hiles, he had that great church in Hammond, Indiana, thousands and thousands. He had 130-something thousand people in his church, and he'd have... 30, 40, 50,000 people there on Sunday morning. He would not televise his show or he, he would not do his uh, he, he would not do his church service live at all. You know why? He says you need to get to church. And, he's, and it does because I've got people right now that even told me that they're going to watch on Facebook and come to church. I love them. They're church members. They're good folks. But uh we need each other. Uh, we need the flesh and bones that we have to interact with one another. You see, I can see you. I can't see you, Facebook. I can't, can't see you. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Should have shut. I mean, there's there's a whole bunch more people going to see me preach this morning because of Facebook which I'm glad at now I'm glad I got people in Arizona watching I got people in Milwaukee watching I got people in various parts of the world watching uh, not in the world uh, there might be some uh, even uh, it, this Facebook thing goes everywhere you know it just goes everywhere I'm glad it's out there but I'm telling you Facebook let me just talk to you for right now come tonight at 5 o'clock for prayer. If you're in driving distance of here and you don't have some godly thing to do, I said godly thing to do at 5 o'clock, come to prayer meeting. At 5 o'clock. I got the Holy Ghost oil here. It ain't got no power in the bottle, but we need to be together. I'll tell you what. Billy Joe, we're going to have a lot better church service at 6 if we start praying at 5. And you and I, if we, we get in here and start confessing our sins to God and, and praying for our loved ones and everything, we'd be fired up for church at 6. Amen? Amen. Yeah. We've got to do it. Here's our problem. We don't follow the first two commandments. Listen to them. Here they are. I'm not going to preach long today, but it's important. The first two commandments. Master, which are the great, which is the great commandment in the law? Look, verse 37. Jesus saith unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. 
This is the first and great commandment. And you know, the parallel passage of this says, with all your strength too, and it has a couple more objectives in there. And it, it, it has more in there. It tells you more, you know. But we must love God first and foremost. If you're able to be here and you're, and you're a member of this church, or you want to worship with us and think about being a member and being part of this, if you're not doing something that is loving God and putting God first, there's no reason you shouldn't be here at 5 o'clock. And I'm talking to you folks that are right here in church now because if history is any reminder of it in this church or any other church, y'all ain't going to be back tonight. There'll be a few like there is in most churches. There's a few. You think you got something more important to do than fellowship with God and pray and hear the word and be a blessing with, huh? All right, church, right here. I can't see you Facebook people, but you think about it. How about it, church? I just want to hear from you. Who got something more important to do than, than be with God at 5 o'clock uh, this afternoon? Raise your hand. You got something more important than anybody. Ain't got a hand in the place. Now, whether you're doing something with God at 5 o'clock somewhere else or here, I'd like you to be here if you're part of this church, your church members here. Come. Folks don't come, Billy Joe. They sit in their recliners and watch a stupid boob tube. God help your wicked soul if, if instead of prayer meeting and church, you watch the boob tube. Haven't heard the call that in a while. <laughs> the boob tube. Yeah. yeah. This is the first and great commandment, Jesus said. Verse 39, And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. Wow. You're supposed to love folks. You're supposed to love God first. And if you love God first and you really love God, you know what? You'll love your neighbor the way you should. Huh? Yeah, you will. I'm not talking about, well, I says, well, some of my neighbors, but some of my neighbors aren't saved. Love them. For God so loved the world, he gave us, why don't you love your neighbor and pray for him? I hear so many people complaining about their neighbors and complaining about this and complaining about that. Why don't you love them, pray for them, and try to witness for them for the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Quit your grumbling and complaining, talking about your loved ones. Pray for your loved ones. You can pray for them alone, but it would be good if we get together and pray for them too, wouldn't it? I'm going to tell you something. I had a preacher stir me up on prayer in a sermon I listened to. And the sermon was this. I've got it out on the on the front sign, both sides of the sign. It is written, My house shall be the house of prayer. That's what Heavenly Father says. To all of my will and all of my strength, I'm going to do all I can as a pastor of this church to make sure it's a house of prayer. You want to stay and pray a little bit after church today? Amen. We're going to have the Lord's Supper today. That's going to be nice. And then we're going to pray at 5. Then we're going to have church. Maybe the Holy Ghost will break out and we'll pray all night. You see, that's impossible. It's happened plenty. It happened in the Bible all the time. It's happened in Christian history. If we love God, we must keep in constant fellowship with him. You know what the Bible encourages us to do and commands us to do? A pray without ceasing. Why don't you do this? Listen, church. <laughs> Wait next time. Next time you think about sinning, and you will. Billy Joe, next time you think about sinning, and you will. Yeah. Travis, you know what I'm going to say to you? 
next time you think about sinning. And you will. And Lisa. And Mike. And Joanne. And Sandy. And John. And Rose. And Charlene. And on and on and on. And get this. And Pastor Varga. Me too. Oh, you like I include me. Uh, we're all sinners. <coughs> next time. Next time. The thought. If you see a beer ad. Or if you see, fellas, a sensuous picture of a woman. Whatever gets you. That's right, Lisa. Put your hands over his eyes. <coughs> Protect your husband. Put your hand over his eyes. Say, don't you look at them Jezebel women. But if you're tempted, which we'll all be tempted. Just start loving Jesus. Just start loving your Heavenly Father. The moment it hits you, whether it's alcohol, whether it's sex, whether it's meanness or uh, wicked stuff, just all of a sudden say, Oh, dear Lord, I love you. Heavenly Father, you're my Savior. You say, I don't know he's my Savior. Get saved today then. Amen? If you're out there in Facebook or you're here today, if you're not saved yet, get saved. I'm going to tell you what, while you're loving on God and putting God first and loving Him with all your heart and mind and soul and loving your neighbor as yourself and caring about Him, you will not be able to sin. No, no, you won't have time to sin. You'll have time to love God and do good. Amen. And you'll pray. And not only will you pray, but your prayers will be answered. I don't know about you. I'm not young anymore. I'm old. I don't know how long I got. I feel good. I believe God's got some things for me to do. I don't feel I'm going to go to heaven anytime soon. I might go today, but I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, I'm going to love God first. Amen. I'm going to love my fellow man second. <laughs> Now, see, you can't, the reason you won't come to prayer meeting and the reason you won't pray at home is you don't love God. You love all that foolishness on television or what you read or where you go or, or I'm, I'm telling you the truth. You got to get separated from, how, how, how many of you uh, know this? Sir, I'm glad to have you here today, but would you please shut your phone off? I can't have phones going off in church. This is a big deal in here. Just put that thing off till we get out of here. I know you just came in, and I appreciate you being here, but we need, I can't have people looking at phones and walking in and out of church. We've got to get serious about God and love Him. Amen. Yeah. Would you admit it? <laughs> you got too much junk in your trunk. Amen. Huh? You got too much mess in your life. You got all of this worldliness flooding you. You think it doesn't matter, but it does matter. It's keeping you from God. It's keeping you from loving them. It's keeping you from loving your neighbor and ministering to people and having your prayers answered. That's why we don't pray. That's that's why people don't come to prayer meetings. That's why they don't pray alone. They don't pray together because they don't love God and they don't love the neighbor. You know what stupid prayers are? You say, do people pray stupid? Most pray, people pray stupid. Most people pray and all they can do is Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give God. That's selfish. That's selfish. I don't know. I've never asked God for a car. I've never asked him for food. Never asked him for clothes. Never asked him for a house. 
I just have, I've asked people, I got hundreds of people now, I pray regularly they get right with God or get saved. Amen. I've prayed for houses for others, but never for myself. Yeah. I've prayed for cars for others, never prayed for one for myself. You see, you can't really love God and put him first if you love yourself first, huh? Is that our problem? Let's admit it now. Is that our problem sometime? We think too much of ourselves. It's all about me. Right. Only way you're going to love God and love your neighbor is forget about me, huh? How many of you say today, this is, this is getting a hold of me? I got to start forgetting about me and thinking more about God. Would you agree with me on that? That's what we got to do. How about you, Facebook? I'm going to forget about me and start thinking about God. Oh, my. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, Jesus' words, with all the heart, with all the soul, and with all the mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, all the law, a uh, hinge, all the law, that means this. Everything else hinges on those two. If you get those two, you'll, you'll abide by the Bible. You'll listen to the Bible. You'll obey the Bible. You'll do right. Everything will fall out right. God will tell you what to do if you love him and love name. God will tell you what. See, what our problem is, we're so selfish. We're praying for selfish things all the time that we may, as James says, it says, Ask and ye shall receive. Okay? It tells us we need to ask. But in James, he says, ye ask amiss, ye ask for the wrong thing, that ye may consume it upon your own lusts. You see, that's selfish stuff. Give me a car. Give me money. Give me health. It might not be God's will to give you health. He might want to take you to heaven. Why do you think your health is so important? Maybe sometimes the closest you'll get to God is when you get sick. You say, well, I'm concerned about that if I get sick. What if I die? You'll be closer to God yet. You'll be in heaven if you're saved. Amen. <laughs> it ain't all bad to go to heaven, is it? Huh? Why Christians get so uptight about getting sick? I'm bad sick. Well, Maybe you go to heaven soon. My, my daughter, I'll never forget this. When I found out I had cancer nine years ago or so now, I called my daughter Jennifer. She's really, my other daughter isn't that emotional, but Jennifer's really emotional. The one who lives here is married to preacher Scott. Jennifer, she's all emotional. Told her I had cancer. Oh, daddy, oh, daddy, oh, daddy. And I said, What you so upset about? Oh, you got to get. I said, It don't. You can't have cancer. I said, Listen, honey. I said, I'm glad I got cancer. She said, Don't talk like that. I said, Maybe I get to go to heaven soon. <laughs> huh? Is that a bad thing? You might be scared of dying today. You know why? You ain't saved. You ain't going to heaven. How can anybody that's saved worry about dying? Huh? If you're saved and you can leave this old sin sick world and uh, you know why you get sick and die? Curse of sin. Curse of sin in general and your personal sin. Amen. How many sinners we got in here? All you saved people. Uh, you know all the ones that don't raise their hand when I ask if they're sinners is lost people. <laughs> they don't raise their hand. Sad to say. We have to acknowledge our sin, confess it, trust in the blood of Christ and the power of his resurrection. Glory to God. Wow. Love God first. Love your neighbor second. Everything else will be added to you. Houses and wives and whatever money you need he'll tell you what to pray for that'll honor him 
and it'll get you out of your consuming it upon your own lusts. You pray your sinful, lustful prayers, and then you're mad because you don't get them and you don't pray at all. Forget about yourself. Love God and love others. Amen? Amen. Short preaching today. Read it over. God will bless you for it. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for these great scripture. Jesus said, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy, all thy strength, all thy mind, everything. Love God. And love your neighbor as yourself. Love every folks, the saved people, the lost people. Love everybody. Love is the key word. And all these things that we need for the honor and glory of God will be added unto us. Help us now. In the church today, you say, Pastor, I'm a saved person. Would you slip your hand up if you're saved? You say, I'm saved. Amen. Okay, but put your hands down. Thank you. Most could raise their hands. Some of you couldn't raise your hands. You say, I'm not saved, Pastor, but I want you to pray for me. I'm not sure I'm a born-again Christian. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. Would you pray for me? Just slip your hand up. Let me see your hand. Yes. Yes. Are there others? Are there others? How about out on Facebook? Would you raise your hand? You say, I'm, I'm not a born-again Christian. I'm not sure I'm saved. Would you pray for me? I, I can't see your hand, but God can see it. Lord, help these that are here in the audience that are unsaved and those out in Facebook that need to be saved. I pray that they see the simplicity of it. It's nothing difficult. It's not becoming a Baptist or a member of the rescue mission or a member of taking on a certain duties that you must fulfill. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's by grace through faith. Help them see the simplicity and repent and ask God to save them right now. This is a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose to the grave the third day. The best I know how, with an honest heart, I turn from my sins to receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Lord, you know those that have trusted you here in our church and out in the Facebook audience. And I pray that you'd seal it and bless it and they'd go forward for thee, following thee. Follow the Lord in believer's baptism as soon as possible. Help us now. Thank you for the saving power. Thank you for the great commands. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy strength. And help we that are Christians, most in the auditorium, raise their hands. I know many of you out there on Facebook also are saved. Let's put God first. Let's put others second, our neighbors, and love them. And everything else will be added on. And we'll have the joy of the Lord and we'll have the power of God. And we'll have rest in our souls. Help us now. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now listen, Facebook. We'll be on tonight. We're going to go on and have the Lord's Supper here now. You could be, if you were here, you could have part of that. And uh, do some other things and have a meal together. But Facebook, I'm going to say goodbye to you. Share this with someone. Send it to them. And we'll, uh, if you want to view, uh, be here in person. If you're able to, come tonight at 5. If you want to come to pray in six for church, I hope you'll come this evening and share this message this morning with someone. God bless you.